Hello friends, I'm a cloud solutions architect at Microsoft and my aim is to empower every single person to be better at technical interviews. Keeping with that goal in mind, today I'm going to give you one of my very first interview experiences that I had with Royal Bank of Canada. Uh, so Royal Bank of Canada, for the rest of this video, I'm going to mention it as RBC. Uh, it is a very popular bank in Canada and I have worked there for almost five years. And I got hired long time back, but I'm going to give you the full story that how I got hired, what were the whole procedure and how things happened. So the whole process started in February 2017. Now let me give you a quick background of my position at that time. So in May 2016, I completed my master's. It took me six months to find a job. I finally found a job in Milton, Ontario. It was a very small company of like four or five employees uh, where I was working as a junior Java developer, which I was completely sucking at because I was pretty fresh and I, I didn't had much work experience at that time. And uh, at that time in February 2017, uh, one of the recruiters from RBC reached out to me. And at that time, they asked me that, uh, hey, are you interested? We have this position for something like junior Java developer. And I was like, yeah, definitely. I would love to move forward with that. And uh, our conversation started. Now, at that time, the company I was already working at, the company, the small company with four or five guys, like uh, some few things happened. And uh, basically, I got laid off from that company in March 20. Uh, 17 so the thing is it worked out for me perfectly that uh, the recruiter reached out to me on linkedin and we, uh, i already had a conversation going on with rbc because i basically ended up getting the job and working there for five more years so it was a very great time in my career and now let's get started with the actual interview experience so after some back and forth with the recruiter, uh, basically we discussed few things on the message on LinkedIn and then we decided to schedule a call. This was a very pre preliminary base, uh, type of con conversation, nothing special. And the questions were pretty simple that what are my expectations? What, are, what is my experience? What is the requirement of the role and what basically how much time it takes to complete the interview process and, and blah, 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 all, all of those things that a typical recruiter asks. Uh, after going through that, we basically decided to have uh, an interview with the hiring manager. Now, the thing is, uh, in this case, this was 2017, definitely pre-COVID. All the interviews were happening in person and we decided upon a date. So uh, we decided the date. I went to RBC. Uh, I went to their office in downtown. It's a beautiful office. And uh, I basically met the hiring manager. Now, when the original recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn, the, the recruiter had mentioned that the interview is going to be for a junior Java developer kind of a position. And uh, I was uh, I was preparing something for that. I had my own uh, job description document and I was going through that. When I actually got into the interview with the hiring manager, it turned out that my hiring manager, rather than asking me questions regarding the Java, uh, he started explaining that they, the team that he owns or he maintains basically that team is, is responsible for a IBM tool called data power. And if you don't know what data power is, data power is basically like a middleware gateway kind of a thing where if you have any of your servers, uh, basically you put data power before your servers and anyone who wants to access your highly critical sensitive data kind of a server, they will have to go through data power and data power would make sure that uh, proper authorization, authentication, all of those procedures are taken place. They, and it's a very powerful tool. Basically, uh, it is used in different armies all around the world and it is also used by most of the banks. So it is specifically designed for security. And if you know anything about banks, they love, they want to make sure that their security is at the highest level. So I was basically interviewing, started interviewing for that position. But my condition was that I just told him that, hey, even though I know that I'm interviewing for this position now, but I have never actually heard about data power. So then uh, basically we had a whiteboard and then he started going through all of the all of the transactional flows on how things work in data power and what his team does. And I was I got curious. So I, uh, I started asking a lot of questions at that time and uh, we had a lot of back and forth. And then uh, he explained that what kind of uh, security mechanisms are being set up, how they are set up. 
that was the first time I saw, actually heard the terms like 2-way SSL certificates, RSA tokens and blah blah blah. Like I had some idea about them when I was studying but not at the actual practical level and this was the first time I'm, I'm hearing. The good thing that worked out for me is that I was actually very curious at that time because it sounded like really fun and when he mentioned that this is like one of the most sophisticated piece of software that is very difficult to break into and that's why uh, all the top companies love it even though it's on the expensive side but still it's very useful so that actually may increase a lot of curiosity inside me so i i basically just ask bunch of questions so it wasn't a conventional interview where i would be uh, asked a lot of questions and then i would have to answer them it's actually a back and forth conversation with my manager and it turned out to be really good the thing is then the most uh, boring phase started because uh, number one, I had my interview with recruiter. Number two, I had my first interview with my hiring manager and everything worked out smoothly for me. Uh, but the thing is, I didn't receive back from them for next two months. And by this time, uh, I was in the phase where I recently got the notice that I might be getting laid off and uh, I was under a lot of panic. So I started applying to a lot of different companies. And at the same time, I was also in the process with RBC. It turned out I kept on following up with the recruiter and then the recruiter sent me an email saying that uh, the hiring manager liked my initial conversation and uh, I think he's OK, but it turned out he, he was on vacation and uh, now he's back and now we can move forward with the next phase. So now the next phase was that I need to speak with the manager of the hiring manager. So basically with the director of that particular team and uh, I had I was well prepared. Uh, I did like a lot of research beforehand that uh, what are the things could be expected of me? What are the things that I need to present? And since I knew that I didn't had much experience in the actual job because I was recently a fresh fresh graduate, I need to make up with at least my enthusiasm and also my curiosity and which I already possessed. Like I, I'm tend to be on the curious side of things because I always want to learn new, new things and different things. So that worked out for me. So when I had my conversation with the uh, director, uh, this was the second phase of the interview and during this phase uh, I, the things were going pretty smoothly uh, there were no technical questions asked in this conversation mainly it was just about myself that what are my aspirations what are my goals what are the things i want to do and uh, what not and it turned out to be a really productive conversation and um, i was able to answer all the questions i was also like pretty happy by myself to speak with someone who already has like uh, let's say 20 25 years of experience and uh, who has worked at many different companies and who is at a very good level in his career so I, actually i was more excited rather than uh, on the uh, anxious to speak with him and i think that worked in my favor that uh, after speaking with the director just after like two three days i received a mail saying that uh, they like my conversation and actually uh, basically i was hoping that after speaking with the director this would be it like this would be the final thing i need to do and nothing more than that but uh, it turned out that this was only the second interview and now the actual technical interview was supposed to be conducted and what they did is that uh, this was the first time i saw that uh, but i know that a lot of other companies do it as well uh, but the thing is my hiring manager at that time uh, he provided me like a document and in that particular document there was actually a problem that i needed to solve so that was like a technical problem but it wasn't a data structure and algorithm kind of a problem it was a problem on the data power tool that I mentioned earlier. So they had given me some table and they told me that if I were to write like an XML query or XSLT query, the uh, the transformation query to uh, generate that kind of a table, how would I do it? How, how would I be able to do it? And uh, I asked for some time. I got like three, four days to prepare for it. I did a lot of research because I have basically never worked on uh, these technologies. But uh, in the end, I was able to come up with something. It was not the most appropriate or like the best result, but it was good enough. So I was happy to be done with that question. But the thing is, this, there was also another question. And that another question was that I needed to present to the hiring committee on the uh, like the how the communication between any two systems work and what are different communication mechanisms and how basically 
how can we leverage that so i needed to establish that what could be the different potential ways on which two systems can communicate what could be the vulnerabilities what could be the flaws and what could be the solutions so and this i had it i had to present this was like the only thing mentioned it, it wasn't given a specific format or a specific set of technology that i need to use or things like that and this question actually became really critical so the thing is i decided to use the power of presentation to the best manner possible because i knew that uh, if i am able to present this in the best possible way i think my path towards success would be pretty uh, high and i might be able to get the job actually so i started preparing a lot and when it came to like i already mentioned that uh, i completed the coding challenge already so i had that solution ready but when it actually came towards the explaining the presentation i was presenting to words like two person whose bread and butter was net network security like they used to just completely work and dive deep into it and they were managing like billions of transactions securely through their systems so i know it was challenging but i used like lot of i read lot of books and i went through lot of youtube videos and then i try to make some kind of a, like a flashy presentation where i would just like walk around the room and i would do this 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 and i would i actually used uh, the actual person who was who were interviewing me as one of the person in my presentation and then i did so i, I did bunch of different things but it all worked out and uh, the interview was a success so after completing the third round the very next day i got my uh, offer letter and saying that they were happy to proceed with me and at that time i had already been laid off from the previous company i was at so i was desperately looking for a new position and rbc was a one of the wonderful place to work uh, the thing is uh, one of the thing i regret doing is that because i was a pretty fresh guy and i was a fresher i didn't knew much so i didn't negotiate on, on my salary and uh, whatever the offer was there it was a very good offer for my position at that time it was really good i but i just accepted it without uh, even asking any questions because i was in a de desperate situation but in in future if i have to advise someone i would at least advise that first of all do your market research and go through different things to see if you are able to come up with a better solution and better salary negotiation so i didn't do that but i wish i would have done it but anyways uh so this the whole process took almost like 4 months to complete because there was lot of waiting period in between rather than actually uh, the interview preparation and interview timing there was a lot of wait but it worked out in the end and uh, yeah this is my journey 